Hey there, Josh Arantia, Realtor, Tehachapi, California, uh, here in Chicago for the second uh, day of my leadership training with Nas National Association of Realtors here in Chicago. Uh, very powerful day today. Uh, very much more focused on each one of us as people and things that we can do to be more effective in our communication skills, uh, to be more collaborative, to be more inclusive, to be more empathetic, um, to listen to people, uh, and to lead with our heart first, and to make decisions with our minds after, later after we have all the information of learning techniques on how to be supportive of everybody's ideas. So when we are in a boardroom, uh, when we are in a meeting, when we are in a negotiation, or when we're in a living room uh, at, a, at a listing presentation, um, that we're supportive, we're building, we're not tearing people down. We're not saying, uh, no, you can't do that, or yes, but, but we're saying yes, and, and, you know, yes, and, and this, and that, and we're building. So um, the NAR did a, had some great people come talk to us today. Uh, one of the groups, there was three people that came from Second City, the, the famous uh, improv group, and uh, they actually did a number of exercises with us uh, as, as well as entertain us, but um, really opened a lot of doors and, and shed a lot of light on how we need to effectively communicate with people and how we need to support and build people up instead of tear people down or also how to listen, listen for real uh, and not start to try to answer somebody's question when it's only halfway out of their mouth, but let them, uh, what, what do they call it? They, I, have, I have my notes here, uh, so I'll just check my notes here real quick. But um, I think something that really st stuck out with me was, you know, to be patient uh, and to never assume that anybody knows exactly what you're talking about and to create, what I love this line here, it was called create space where people can ask for clarity, which I think, um, gosh, especially when, when you're teaching or when you're trying to explain, right? So you may have the knowledge and, and somebody asks you a question and you know, so many times we just go, well, of course you know what I'm talking about and you just start blurting out information and, and the people are like, whoa, dude, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I need you to slow down and we just power over them. Sometimes I'm guilty for sure of just powering over people, just saying, okay, here's my knowledge base and here it is. And uh, I'm not creating space for clarity. I'm not creating space for the question. I'm not creating um, an opportunity to be a more effective communicator. Uh, you know, I'm trying to impress somebody or I'm trying to get through that part so I can get to the next part instead of taking the time to listen and show empathy and, um, you know, be open and supportive. So I thought that was one of the big takeaways um, that I had. Also, uh, I'll go back to my notes here. Um, we talked a lot about, you know, not saying no or not saying yes, but, but saying yes and in that building technique, technique but also talked a lot about um, being real and being genuine, which we hear about a lot, right? You gotta be genuine. People know when you're not when you're not genuine, but being real to yourself and allowing the creativity to flow instead of being worried about, like for example, what I'm doing right now, right? I got a camera in front of me, I'm telling you guys about what I did, and I could be thinking to myself in my mind, well, who cares, right? They don't care, why do they wanna hear this? So I, I could be really judgmental uh, about myself and some of you might be really judgmental about me, but I think you know the biggest killer is me being judgmental about myself, so I'll shut down, I'll close down, I will edit the way that I talk, I will edit the way that I behave, because I'm afraid that somebody else is gonna judge me. So the, the cool takeaway of the quote from that was, you cannot create and edit at the same time, right? So you can't have this free-flowing, open, organic, uh, thought and try to edit yourself 
at the same time. They, it just doesn't work like that. Your brain can't do that. So if you're worried about the image, the thought, other people's criticism, your own criticism, it's going to stifle your ability to be creative, which, um, you know, in this position is something that I need to be able to allow people to do and allow myself to do, to be creative. If we're going to come up with solutions, if we're going to come up with, with ideas, that needs to flow. So that was really cool. Uh, the, the One of the other things we had at the very end uh, uh, was uh, a body language expert. She's the, She calls herself the body language expert to the celebrities, I believe. And she works for the police and the FBI and so on and so forth. And, and just by watching the way people talk, the movements that they make, where they look when they're thinking, how they shrug their shoulders, what they do with their hands, their arms, so on and so forth. There's so much, as I think she said, five seconds before the thought comes the body language, uh, before the words come out, right? So you can really pick up if we stop and pause and look and listen. There are, are so many cues that um, we can use, not necessarily to try to, you know, defeat people or find weaknesses or find out if somebody's lying or so on and so forth, but so many times when we're sh with clients showing a house, in, in, again, in the uh, in the living room doing the listing presentation, uh, listing presentation, you can see, you can kind of get cues, you can know where you're going, whether people are engaged or whether people are disengaged, whether people are having a tough time dealing with what you're saying, if they need more clarity, uh, if they need a moment to just let it sink in and absorb. Uh, and, and then in our interpersonal relationships, right, about um, all those things. And the, the thing that hits home, the home, the home run part of it, uh, because this stuff is professional, but then it's also personal, right? Personal life. So um, we go out there and we work and we work and we work and we take our work home with us. Some of us do. I do. I know I do. Guilty for sure. And then we, through our body language and answering people's thoughts and questions before they're finished talking and trying to come up with what I'm going to say, thinking about what I'm going to say instead of listening to them. So then you got to ask yourself, like, do you do that when you're home? Do you do that in your home space with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your parents, uh, with whomever you're with? How much are we really engaged versus how much do we just, you know, stay inside our own head and not create space for time, not create space for love, not to create space for compassion, not to create space for clarity. We just keep moving and keep moving. Uh, so, um, you know, definitely some things for me to take home, maybe some things for you to take home. Um, I wish that everybody in my association could have been here today. Um, this was one of the more valuable courses or days or um, class work rooms I've been in, um, if not ever, then in a very long time. Uh, so yeah, big, powerful day today. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm gonna come home a totally different person, uh, but I will definitely come home uh, changed, tempered, modified, more uh, willing to listen, be compassionate, and try to uh, foster uh, creative ideas. So that's it from day two uh, here in Chicago. Uh, we were supposed to go to a... Uh, Chicago White Sox game tonight. My buddy Don Scordino from Fresno uh, scored four tickets. We were going to run down there, check out the game, but it started raining and the game got rained out. So we toured uh, the new Kaminsky, drove by Soldier Field, went up to Wrigley, walked around there for a little bit, went down and had some Chicago-style uh, deep dish pizza. Um, but it was raining pretty much all night tonight, so... Uh, but still had a great time. Awesome. These events are so cool because 
building relationships outside of our association, building relationships with other people within the state of California, within our region, or outside of our region, even some of the, some of the folks I know are not in Region 12, and now here on a on this national level, which you know I don't know how much my future uh, will see me on the national level, but I met I've met people from Wyoming and Kansas and Virginia and North Carolina. There was a contingency from Texas today. Uh, um, gosh, I can't even think how many other states. Uh, so there was somebody from Rhode Island and Massachusetts, uh, in Florida. So we've seen people from all over the country here. There must have been close to 3,000 people in the uh, in the room today, and uh, everybody fighting for the same thing, fighting for the same goals, fighting for this with the same amount of advocacy for um, our industry, for our clients, and everybody just as hungry to um, discover these new ways of communicating and being a better leader. So it's just really cool to be around these people. I wish you guys could all be here. Uh, but that's it for day two, signing off, and a uh, short day tomorrow, and then we head home.